be here now. And he spoke about bamboo and its properties and the spiritual strength that it represents. And then he went off into another tangent. But that one phrase kind of stuck with me and is the basis for our experience this evening. So I thank you for participating with me, kind of exploring a new way of looking at bamboo as a spiritual experience. I would like to especially welcome anyone who is here for the very first time. Um, please join us in the lobby after the service at the welcome table for a gift that we have for you. Um, fill out your connection card for this evening for everyone um, so that we may better connect, to stay connected as spiritual community. I'm going to um, share with you some of the announcements for this week before we get uh, started into what will be a night of music and meditation and a bamboo rhythm dance. Um, we'll start with uh, the announcements, of course, coming up on uh, Sunday meditation at 9.15, our celebration service at 10. Reverend Doug is back. And I know we'll have some stories of his time in Puerto Vallarta we, at the minister's conference. He's been working hard all week um, on the beach in Puerto Vallarta. Um, <laughs> if you would like to join the choir, rehearsals are Monday evening. And they would love to have your voice, especially as they are practicing and gearing up for our Christmas holiday services and all of the wonderful presentations that that we enjoy so much with their music. Come be a part of that and show up on Monday evening at 6.45 right here, and Mary will welcome you with open arms. Uh, Tuesday mornings, Adventures um, in Faith with Lynn in the Great Room. Um, it's a drop-in discussion group. Drop in. See Lynn, join with other great folks as they discuss this philosophy we call science of mind. And then next Wednesday, uh, Debbie Little will be here to share with you what would you be without your story. So next Wednesday evening, buck a bowl, and then join with Debbie Little here for the uh, Wednesday celebration. We have m much more coming up. The Oktoberfest with a global heart on October 11th. And then if you have not already signed up for an interfaith for, uh, excuse me, for um, the focus groups, are these, where's Reverend Chair? Are the clip, clipboards out tonight or Sunday? They'll be out Sunday? Okay, S Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, if you have not already signed up for a focus group, please do so. Um, participate with Reverend Cher as um, she leads, uh, facilitates um, a focus in the area based on perhaps um, how long you've been attending here or some other special interest. Um, Sign-up sheets will be there Sunday and maybe next Wednesday night, maybe? Okay. And then the interfaith forums will begin um, a week from Sunday. This is an opportunity to gather together with other faith traditions throughout the greater Las Vegas area in different uh, faith homes. Um, the first event is held in the... Um, Congregation Ner Tamid, Jewish Temple, on Stephanie and 215. And the panel discussion will be, it's entitled, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. I will be one of the panelists presenting at that time. Uh, then we take a week off for the Parliament of World Religions, and then the, the next forum will be Reverend Doug participating. Um, there are brochures on the wall in the lobby um, right by the uh, welcome table. So if you'd like to know more about the schedule, the events, the topics, please join us and be a part of that. You have all of the announcements here on our website. Um, if you haven't signed up for the e-blast to receive the email information, please do so. Um, take, take the information home, check out the postings around the center, and participate as much as you are able and, and willing to do to become uh, an even greater experience of the energy of the divine in this Center for Spiritual Living. At this time, I would like to invite Christine to
come up and provide our invocation for the evening. So as we settle into our seats right now, letting go of everything that we have been through today, right now, just communing, communing with spirit. And in this very moment, I recognize its brilliance. Spirit here right now in this place. Spirit everywhere. It's universal presence in mind. It's peace and love. Hmm. And take the time to commune. power, its glory, and wholeness. Mm, eternal. Spirit of love and wholeness. I connect with it readily, with grace and ease, allowing it to feel build me. And in this evening, as I connect with it, I know right now that its energy will bring light. So grateful to share it with all that is before me. knowing right now that the evening unfolds in a way that is magnificent for everyone present. So I accept its energy. I share its light. And may we hear exactly what it has to offer for us this evening. And I accept it right now. And I know it is good and very good. So I let it be. And so it is. Thank you. So in the Asian cultures, we learn a great deal about bamboo. Science has shared with us that the um, compressive strength of bamboo is greater than wood, brick, and concrete, and that its tensile strength rivals steel. Now, compressive strength and tensile strength don't mean a whole lot to me. Um, I looked it up, and it still didn't mean a whole lot to me. My daughter, the engineer, explained it to me. It still doesn't mean a whole lot to me. What I know is I can't break this. I have a floor made out of bamboo. I have a nightgown made out of bamboo, bamboo. And it amazes me how this reed can serve so many purposes, and yet it is hollow. Yeah, it's hollow. 
except for these little knots every once in a while where it kind of has a joint. Something so hollow, so lightweight, and so strong that it can make a floor, a building, or a bathrobe with textures that are so varied, with purposes that are so extreme. Clothing made out of bamboo is, is perfect for any weather. It wicks away moisture and keeps you warm when it's cold and keeps you cooler when it's warm. And I'm going, how does that work? Magnificent feat of engineering, except there was not a single engineer around to create bamboo. It was a creation of the divine. And because of that, it's instilled with those same God qualities that are a part of you and I, and everything that we see, everything we feel, everything of creation that is that same God purpose, God quality, that innate spiritual essence of perfection that created this. So what we have learned from the um, many Asian cultures is that in the Chinese culture, it is a symbol of uprightness. And yet in India, it's a symbol of friendship. The idea of bamboo growing straight and tall and yet, we can see many times we've purchased a decorative bamboo that has all of these wonderful twists and turns and braids and weaves. And so that very idea of it being able to be molded and shaped while still retaining its strength and its hollowness, again, is such creative intelligence that no mere mortal could have designed it. Bamboo plays an important role in Chinese culture, regarded as a behavioral model for gentlemen. Bamboo has features such as uprightness and tenacity and hollow heart. And so bamboo has been endowed with properties of integrity elegance, plainness, and though it is not physically strong in and of itself, it, the gentleman who desires to embody the characteristics of bamboo must be mentally strong, upright, and perseverant. And as bamboo is hollow hearted, he should open his heart to accept anything of benefit and never have arrogance or prejudice. In Vietnam, the culture reveres bamboo as gentlemanlike, straightforward, hardworking, optimistic with unity and adaptability. Those all sound like traits that I aspire to have in my life. So this idea of bamboo can be my inspiration as well. The form that bamboo takes is simply the expression of God creating itself as a reed. It's not a tree plant. It's a reed, hollow, pliable, and growing from its roots of the neighboring plant. Yet within it, in its hollowness, remains the essence, God qualities, creative intelligence, the original idea. So we perceive this bamboo reed as being hollow and yet 
we read in the Science of Mind textbook from uh, our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. Pure spirit is at the center of all form. Of itself, it is formless, but it is ever giving birth to form. The forms come and go, but it goes on forever. We are some part of it. If pure spirit is at the center of everything and is always responding to our thought, there is no limit to its manifestation for us except the limitations that we set. And so we see within the apparent hollowness of the bamboo that pure spirit is at the center of all form. There are other lessons to be learned from bamboo. Let's watch. I'd like to introduce you to the miracle of Chinese bamboo. It all begins with a seed and with the vision of someone willing to wait. A Chinese farmer, usually struggling to survive and provide for his family, plants the seed and sets his hope and vision on all it will provide when it towers 90 feet above his head. With a heart toward the future, he digs hole after hole plants the seeds, then begins their care. Day after day, he carries water to the spots he has marked. And because it's human nature to want to see results, he carefully inspects the spots every day. Nothing. Knowing he has to feed his family, he plants other crops, carefully sown around the spots that contain the real hope for his future. He continues to water them every day feeding them carefully and watching. Nothing. The other crops sprout within weeks, providing nourishment for his family within months, but provide nothing for the future. These crops will not make his dreams come true. They will simply provide for the present. The Chinese bamboo seeds contain all his hopes, his dreams. A whole year goes by. Nothing. He continues to haul water. He stares endlessly at the spots but sees nothing but barren ground. His hopes, his dreams seem so very far away. There is no evidence of life. Has the seed rotted? Has it died before it ever had a chance to grow? Another year goes by. Nothing. His neighbors, those who don't know and believe in the miracle of the Chinese bamboo, laugh at him. They mock his vision for the future. They look on with scorn as he hauls buckets of water to the spots. He begins to question himself. Will it ever grow? Is he pouring water and his life's energy into something that will reap no reward for him? Another year goes by. Nothing. Three years of pouring water, energy, and hope into the Chinese bamboo. Nothing to show for it. Yet he's heard of the miracle of the Chinese bamboo. He's heard of the huge rewards that come to those who believe. One day he stands over the spots and he cries his frustration and fears. The spots reveal nothing. The barren ground seeming to mock him. Yet the wind whispers hope to him. He sighs and hauls yet more buckets of water. Another year goes by. Nothing. Four years. Four years of hoping, wishing, and diligently tending his dream. Surely the miracle will happen now. His neighbors have quit laughing. They no longer even care. Yet. They talk quietly among themselves of the farmer who isn't quite right. At this point, the farmer isn't even sure. Yet, he's fallen into a habit, so he continues to water the spots. He continues to feed them. It's simply what he does now, with no knowledge of reward, just the simple, now unspoken hope that life resides beneath the spots he so carefully tends. Another year passes. Nothing. Five years. 
the farmer is tired. Tired of hauling buckets. Tired of growing and tending so many other crops to feed his struggling family. Tired of trying to keep his dream alive. Tired of seeing no results day after day. He stares hopelessly at the spots. There could not possibly be life after so many years. He must have watered them wrong. He must not have fed them correctly. If only he had done things differently, there would be growth. Despair rocks his soul. Five years he has poured into his dream, into his hope for a better future. His dream mocks him. The vision of a better life for his family melts away under harsh reality. Tears fill his eyes as he grabs for the last hope residing in his soul and slowly lifts the bucket to pour water onto his dream. After five years, he realizes it would be folly to give up. Then comes the morning when the whole village is jolted awake by the cries of joy from the farmer. They watch startled from their windows as he runs down the dusty road calling for his family to come see. As his family races back up the road after him, the rest of the village pours from their houses to see what has this crazy farmer so excited. They find the family clustered around the spots, talking excitedly. From the edge of the road, they can see green sprouts thrusting out from the barren ground. They seem to be growing before their very eyes. The farmer is dancing. The miracle has happened, he cries. The miracle has come. The spots become the place for everyone in the village to come, watching in amazement as the bamboo grows and grows and grows. Five feet, ten feet, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety. In just six weeks, the bamboo has grown ninety feet tall. Five years of nothing, and now this. Ninety feet in six weeks. It is truly a miracle. The farmer stands to the side. He is aware all his dreams have come true. The harvest of the bamboo will provide all he dreamed of for his family. The bamboo that will replace what is harvested, springing forth from the deep roots forming during the last five years, will provide for generations to come. He also realizes the lessons he has learned are far more valuable. He learned to plant a dream. He learned to do the daily things that would make it a reality. He learned to ignore those who said it couldn't happen. He learned to push past his own fear and doubt and keep taking action. He learned to have faith when there was no reason to have faith. Now he smiles every time he walks through the village. Everyone is hauling buckets of water to their own spots, gazing over at his towering 90 feet tall bamboo. They know what can happen because of him. Because of his willingness to blaze the trail and make his dream come true. What about you? What are you willing to do to make your dreams come true? How long are you willing to work? How long are you willing to take action? How long are you willing to push past your fear and doubt? How much faith and belief are you willing to have? I hope your answer is one that will help you achieve all you dream of in life. As you continue to dream, do so knowing that someone believes in you enough to send you this movie. Someone believes in you enough to make sure you understand the miracle of Chinese bamboo because they believe you can create miracles in your life.
Thank you, Joe. The lessons of bamboo are the same spiritual lessons that we learn by taking classes here at the center, by listening to Sunday morning messages or Wednesday evening celebrations. That we plant the seed, the idea, the dream, and then we take action to allow it to grow. And we don't give up. We continue to have that faith. We continue to have the perseverance. We continue to learn life's lessons from the Chinese bamboo plant. Lynn? Lynn sings for us and Justin accompanies her. I'm going to invite you to come forward and retrieve a piece of your own bamboo and then to sit in these front rows for the next portion of our service. Just one life to live The gifts I have, great and small I give them all I give I give Simply, purely, from my soul, I give. Here I am, a vessel to be. Spirit needs of me, I will be, I will be, I will be. Here I stand, my heart is here.
Thank you, Vin. Justin? So you have in your hand a bamboo reed. Until recently, this was a living plant. And yet, even after having been harvested, it remains its strength, texture, and properties contained within this 12-inch sample. If you look into one end of your bamboo piece, it appears to be empty. And yet, as Dr. Holmes reminded us in his passage, it is filled with pure spirit. So I would like you to follow with me in this meditation of our bamboo spirit. And I would ask you to simply hold it in your hands comfortably, horizontally, vertically, whatever is comfortable for you, to feel the texture, to be aware of the weight, to feel its strength. Can you bend it easily? To be aware of this piece of living creation that is still the energy of God, still that expression of the divine, apparently hollow, and yet filled with the same God energy that fills us. We don't often consider ourselves hollow. And yet the property of the bamboo plant has been revered for its hollow-heartedness. The ability to be open and receptive, to be filled with all that God desires. And as we saw in the movie, the properties or the lessons to be learned from the Chinese farmer are the lessons, same lessons that we apply in our own lives when we have our hopes and our dreams and our goals. And so this bamboo represents all that the farmer went through. I would like for you to contemplate at this time perhaps one dream one goal, one seed that you have planted, perhaps years ago or perhaps just minutes ago. And when you have captured the idea of that hope, that goal, or that seed, Consider the faithfulness that you placed in it. Did you plant it in fertile soil, your mind, that believed and trusted that it would grow? Did you tend to it every day? nurturing it, continuing to have faith, not digging it up to see where it might have disappeared to, not churning up the soil to see if it had rotted away, but remaining steadfast in the nurturing, in the faith in the trust. And waiting. And working. And having faith. And waiting. And working. And having faith. And waiting. And 
working and having faith. Consider this bamboo reed and its origin as a small seed. Consider how strong it has grown. Because of the faith, because of the nurturing, Consider these words, bamboo, blade of grass, strong and hollow-hearted, in its likeness I am transformed, filled with the presence. Bamboo, blade of grass, strong and hollow-hearted. In its likeness, I am transformed, filled with the presence. Consider your seed, your dream, your hope, and see it as the seed of bamboo, and yourself as the faithful, attending, persevering caretaker. Envision how that seed can grow. Feel your piece of bamboo. Feel its strength. Feel its texture. Remember its hollowness. And remember the seed from which it grew. One small piece. Was nurtured and loved and tended until it's time to shoot forth and to grow, to reach the sky as the perfect expression. all contained in that seed. Bamboo, blade of grass, strong and hollow-hearted. In its likeness, I am transformed, filled with the presence. And now I am going to invite you choose to join in the rhythm dance, the bamboo rhythm meditation, where you simply take your bamboo in front of you as you would a partner in your dance, and stand and walk in silence throughout this space in the room. Observe your partner and observe those with whom you come in contact. And at some point, you may decide it's time to change partners, and you may offer your partner to another one in exchange for theirs. And as you continue your bamboo dance, 
Consider the texture, the strength, and the hollow heartedness that is filling this space. Please join the dance. likeness, I am transformed, filled with the presence, bamboo, blade of grass, strong and hollow-hearted, in its likeness, I am transformed, filled with the presence, bamboo, blade of grass, strong and hollow-hearted. In its likeness, I am transformed, filled with the presence. Bamboo, blade of grass, strong and hollow-hearted. In its likeness, I am transformed, likeness I am transformed, filled with the presence. Please say after me, bamboo, blade of grass, strong and hollow hearted. In its likeness, I am transformed, filled with the presence. And once more, bamboo, blade of grass, strong and hollow hearted. In its likeness, I am transformed, filled with the presence. You for sharing in that. I will tell you, that's the first time I've had people um, touching their bamboo sticks together. It's usually very silent. So you've created your own energy. <laughs> You're just supposed to share them back and forth. Great energy. Thank you. That was wonderful. I want you to keep your bamboo reed for as long as it's necessary to remind yourself that you are filled with the presence, that you may not see anything within that is different than anyone else, but you are filled with the presence, and you are willing to be, ready to be, filled with that in creative intelligence, divine presence that desires to create through you as long as you believe, as long as you nurture, 
And as long as you tend to that seed, that dream, and that hope. And so at this time, I invite our prosperity acceptors forward as we share together in another way in which God shows up for us is that perfect expression of divine circulation. A way in which we are able to support this center for spiritual living and this philosophy, but also in a way in which we are able to experience and express our gratitude for all that we have and all that we are and the way in which spirit has shown up in our lives and fills us, whether it is materially or spiritually, financially or in relationships. In this moment, we share our tithes and offerings. And so it is. Before sharing some final thoughts with you, I want to thank Christine for participating as our practitioner of the evening, and Lynn and Justin for their gift of music, which is always so inspiring, and I am so filled with gratitude for all of you, and for each of you for participating um, in this somewhat unique experience <laughs> of the bamboo dance. Um, again, a, a passage from the Science of Mind textbook by Dr. Holmes. He quotes Plotinus saying, Nature is the great no thing, yet it is not exactly nothing, since its business is to receive the forms of thought which the spirit lets fall into it. The illusion is never in the thing, but in the way we look at it. And so, within your bamboo reed, the illusion is not what is inside, for it appears to be empty and hollow, but it is the way in which we perceive it as a vessel to be filled, as a reminder to be open to all that spirit has to offer us, and as an opportunity to grow uprightness, tall, strong, with the intention of planting the seed, nurturing it, and keeping the faith. Thank you for being a part of this evening. Namaste.